What's up guys? I'm currently at the new eruption site here in Iceland. Last night the ground ripped apart and we had a four kilometer long fissure that formed. We were able to get here once it got light today and I've been documenting for various cinema projects with the Inspire 3 and I thought I'd bring you along for the journey to create a cinematic sequence of the lava. We've been escorted here by the police and the search and rescue. There are very strict terms. We can only be here for a very short amount of time. We are of course following all the rules and procedures to do this safely. It's such an incredible experience to be out here documenting nature forming on day one of the eruption. Forgot my landing pad. That's okay. Wow. I think what makes this moment so special is the fact we have the snow and that contrast between, you know, the fire and the snow. It is just so dramatic and it's something that your eyes are not used to seeing. Now I'm gonna put on the 50 millimeter lens and I'm gonna go in for some tight cinematic detail shots and the combination between the 24 millimeter, which is on the camera now, and the 50 millimeter shots should lead to at least some kind of compelling sequence. Really sucks that I don't have my landing pad. But I just, this moment happened so spontaneously and you just got to work with what you've got. I'm doing things very unprofessionally right now as well. So don't tell anyone. I'm gonna steal this lens cap from the 24 just to help with any potential snow blowing. Battery change as well, and then we're on our way again. Oh yeah, 50 millimeter. Getting our battery heating message. It's very cold today. A little bit overexposed here. I'm at 30 frames per second, which is a bit of a new method for me. I usually would shoot in 60. I'm really feeling like the movement of the lava just has a little bit more impact in 30 frames per second. But of course, the ideal would be to get both slow motion and real time. It's a difficult experience with the long lens because it's very important to analyze how close you are to the heat. I've charged so many Inspire 2 batteries from getting too close and it throws you off the distance. So right now I'm just using the FPV camera just to make sure that, you know, I can actually see the whole area in one shot because that usually is gonna mean that I'm safe. All right, next up, I've decided I'm gonna go for a wide 18 millimeter shot. And I think it will tie the sequence together. Even though the 24 millimeter shots were technically wides, I would love to be able to fit the whole lava flow into one shot. I'm not even sure if it's possible from this close distance, but I think it's worth trying. And then our time limit is up. This was a very quick one and a half hour mission that the, uh, the search and rescue team and the police have given us access for. We've been escorted in and out, as you've seen. One of the most surreal moments I've experienced in my journey of documenting volcanoes. Back in the air with the wide lens and my mission now I'm flying quite far away. One issue is that I can't really get glowing lava in the foreground because the end of the lava flow has stopped. I still think with the black and white contrast, it's compelling enough to make the commitment for the battery. This will be my last battery. I'm right about to hit the end of the lava flow. We have the newest addition to Iceland here that formed with a bang last night. Now it's already spreading out quite a lot with a big lava field and uh, several fire potents. It was three and a half kilometers at first, but now it's very 
uh, confined into small portions here and there.